But we've been celebrating the death and life of Jesus, and we've been celebrating the death and life of his salvation. It's awesome. The whole Christian world, everything is set up like a, um, a sales pitch to get to that point where we can then drop in the cross, and then you get to go to heaven, and right? And it's like that's evangelism. That's, that's the evangelical church's main conversation. I think it's bigger than that. It is that. And I don't want to diminish that at all. It's a beautiful thing, the cross. But Jesus wasn't saying, guys, it was just stage one. Stage one was me to leave the throne and come down and humble myself under the mighty, mighty hand of God that he would lift me up in due time and take your sins for you. That was stage one. And when I resurrected, that was stage two. Now you have life, and you have life forever. Stage two. Stage three of the plan, I'm now going to go into every one of you. And I think we've spent most of our evangelical and Christian days focused on stage one, stage two. But we've not focused on stage three, which is the action plan. So we end, we do Easter, we get all jazzed up in Easter, and we celebrate stage one, stage two, and thank you, Lord, we praise you. And then we put all that away, all right, you should step away and we live like we've been living. Stroking the dead person's hair, feeding the dead person, corpse. No, 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 no. We feed the new person. We feed the new life. The plan, stage three plan of Jesus was, I'm going to be in you and we're going to do greater things together than we've ever, ever done before. So I need you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you start thinking that way. Don't feed the past. Don't coddle the old person, the old man, old woman that you are. Feed the new. So what does that mean with lust? That means, yes, we need a defensive strategy. Absolutely. Yeah, don't watch pornography. All right? That helps. That's a defensive plan. If, if you've got some, some habits that are, that are still there, let's get rid of them, all of us. Let's at least put up some barriers and try to crucify the flesh. But that's a defensive strategy. Defense never wins without all good offense, too. I mean, it can't, you guys could argue that, sports fans. <laughs> but I'm saying, you've got to have an offensive strategy. And you know what your offensive strategy is? Feed the new guy. Feed the new person. The way you feed the new person, you spend time with Jesus. You get to know him. You you start to, to to start engaging with righteousness, engaging with holiness. You start the practice and the patterns of purity. And you begin to enjoy the patterns and the habits of purity. Most of the habits of lust are simply because the dead guy's never been properly buried. Yeah, he's been yeah, he's been killed, but you're still holding him around. Bury the sucker! He's done. So, right? Then you see that in Ephesians and Galatians and all through. Put to death, to death that. So we have to, we have to, to basically cast it out. We have to finish it and do a, a burial. Don't spend too much time at the tombstone. Who cares? No big songs. Bury it. Bury the old man. Bury the dead guy. And then begin walking as a new you. Be walking as the new creation, the new creature. Learn your special powers. A new creature has different powers than the old, per the old creature. Powers here, uh, spiritual gifts, all types of new things that cause us to have unbelievable ripple effects of influence and impact on this earth. Jesus was saying, guys, I'm making you into Navy SEALs. Philip, what happens in Philip, uh, to Philip in, in uh, Acts 8, my favorite section, 8 4, it shows the power of Jesus in him. So now Philip, by himself, goes into a town in Samaria and he began to proclaim Jesus there. And when the people heard what he had to say and see the miracles that he did, they turned their attention to him. And with screams and shrieks, the demons came out of many. And with 
with screams of joy, the lepers were healed. And there was great joy in the city that day. That's a new creature doing its job. We're not asking the pastor to do that for us. That's us. What we have to do in our businesses, in our work, we have to bury the dead guy. We have to bury the guy in the thinking of the old person because we have a new thinking pattern. We heal, we cast out, we raise up. That's what Jesus trained us to do. We do it figuratively, figuratively or literally at Giant. We just train all of our leadership guys around the world. Guys, when you find people at peace, you love them, you freely give what you freely receive, and you heal, you cast out, and you raise up. That's what our job is. That's what we do. So, in the same way, it's the same as a new creation. That's our job. Our job is to do what Jesus apprenticed us to do. But we've got to get to stage three. And we've got to start thinking about the execution of Jesus. Any amens here at all? Like, <laughs> I, know, I know dessert. I know you guys are... Thank you. <laughs> engaging in... Engaging in the new. If you struggle with worry, that's an old... If you worry, if I worry, that's an old person. That's the old life. That's the dead person talking. If you're feeding the worry with more worry, right? You guys ever do Did anyone worry? <laughs> worry is a lack of trust. When you displace worry from the center of your life and put trust right in the middle of it, the only way you can do that is like... I trust my dad because I know he's for me. You know why? I spend time with my dad, my real dad. I know he's for me. He'll do anything in the world for me. Why? He keeps proving it over and over and over again. I know it. Spend time with your father. If you want to replace worry, take all the worry and go, oh, here you go again. The new self goes, oh, Lord, here, oh, here, I'm dealing with this again. Let's deal with it. In James it says, consider it all joy. When trials come, you know, the only way you can think that's good is if you're a new create creature. The new creature goes, awesome, trials, yes, <laughs> yes, I can't wait to see what God's going to do. This is going to be great. The old dead person doesn't think that way. Oh, I'll try another. Gosh, God, why are you against me? Oh, man. we wallow, we we tell people, we, oh, can you help me? We moan, we whine. I don't know if anyone else does that. <laughs> Do you see the difference? Anger. Anger. Oh, he just makes me so mad. I wish he would, he just respects me. Again, he did this and this and this. And, and then like malice and anger and like you're feeding a dead guy. That guy's gone. Crucified. Replaced with grace. Jesus, I'm going to, you did it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say forgiveness again. Wow, 77 times. Okay, well, I love the guy. I'm going to love him. We're choosing to renew our mind. You know, Jesus was basically working the whole time with the disciples. If you read and look at the Gospels, he was helping them unlearn. You've heard it say this, but I say this. It's the kingdom. It's the different way of thinking, like Bill was saying. God's ways are not our ways. And Jesus was basically saying, I've got to unlearn some things in you and relearn. It's the transformation of your mind. The scriptures are full of transformation stories to get us to think differently. But it couldn't happen. That's the craziest thing. Jesus himself couldn't get the old guys, the old in us, to operate correctly. And he's with them 24-7. He's like, all right, that didn't work. I don't know if that's what he said. But basically said, all right, well, I've got to move in. Now, that was the plan from all along. Jesus came and said, I'm going to be in you. I know I'm reiterating this over and over again, but maybe there'll be a light bulb, or maybe it's just me and you guys already get this. But it just hit me to go, stage three was Jesus in me. And then that would change everything because I'm a new creation. The old is gone. Yeah, this guy, I don't want to feed that. I don't want anything to do with that guy. I want to be this new guy. And 
and I want to walk as a new creation. So everywhere I go, I have the same encounters as Jesus did and Philip did. Um, okay, so if Albuquerque, if you guys and gals, all of us started operating stage three, Jesus in us as the new people, the new creatures, wouldn't that change? Wouldn't that change your family? Surely, surely it would. Wouldn't it change your organization or your city? But it wouldn't be because we started organizing churches or organizing. It just meant that wherever we went, it started happening. And it radically changed everyone that we touched. So it's, it's transformation. It's a new mind, mindset. The, this big idea that actions, actions follow thoughts. So we have to change our thoughts and get to the place where we have a new mindset. The old mindset is gone. The new mindset is here. The old life is gone. The new life is here. It's new, not old. It's holiness, not sin. It's about the transformation of the renewing of our minds so that we'll get to the place of being in the stage three I made that up, you guys, so forgive me. It's just the best way I can think of it. Um, that's not biblical stage three. You know. It's just simply me looking at the, the stages of Jesus to go, we're to be a new, an army of new creatures who operate completely differently. We operate, instead of onward Christian soldiers with a big shield like crusaders, it's onward followers of Jesus with love as our banner. It's a different game. It's Jesus in us doing things that you would always wanted to do. Taking you places you've always wanted to go. But to do it, it's the process of dying. And so the last thing is in Galatians 5. I love this, this verse. It's so funny. I've read this a million times and it's just come to life. In Galatians 5. <clears throat> But the fruit of the Spirit, right, you know, this was love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there's no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. <coughs> they have a, a funeral, a white funeral. The, the old saints called it, for burying yourself. Since we live in the new, by the Spirit, Let's keep in step with them. Let's keep in step with the Spirit. He's marching. He's moving. Let's just stay with Him. Let's be there. Let's be the new creatures. <clears throat> Let's be those who, like Philip, when people hear what we have to say and see what we do, they turn their attention and let us in security and confidence. Let us heal the sick. Let's cast out demons. Let's raise the dead, either figuratively or literally. So there's great joy in the city of Albuquerque, or in the village or neighborhood that you're in, or in your house. Let's let the risen Jesus be the risen Jesus in us and through us. So that we're not worshiping him as a far off God who, Lord, please come. Please come right now. Please come. Visit us. Visit us. I abide in you. I'm, I'm here. I've moved in. I've inhabited you. That doesn't make any sense. I'm already here. Let's go to work. Get up off your knees and let's go. Let's experience what I have planned as that's my plan to change the world, Jesus says. How did Jesus change the world in three years? He took 12 nobodies. He trained them and unlearned and then got them ready so that the game changer, the Holy Spirit, can come into them. And then they went to town and they spread like wildfire. Make sense? Amen. Thank you. Amen.